this robot is doing this autonomously, on its own. It's, there's a web interface. You tell it what kind of beer you want. If you say, I want a Guinness, it'll go in there and grab you a Guinness, put it in its base, and drive it to you. If you say you want a Bud Light, it'll stop, pop up a dialog box, and say, are you sure you want a Bud Light? The, the exciting thing about this project, getting it to fetch a beer, was that not just that the robot's doing it completely autonomous. That is a big milestone. But the bigger milestone is, we did this project in one week, right? About eight engineers, one week, got this to work. And we think this is just a great opportunity, but it suggests that robots are gonna be able to help any of us. Imagine if you, uh, you know, have knee surgery and you have to be stuck on the couch for a long time. Having a robot in your house, if it's not this big and this loud, having that robot in your house could actually be useful. You might be able to con control it, tell it, go to the refrigerator and get me a beer or a Coke or something from the refrigerator and bring it back or maybe even do other simple tasks. And as we get the technology better, there'll be more and more things that you can just ask the robot to do. Um, this is the uh, museum. <laughs> These are devices that came from our work at MIT. Some of it's from local work here. For example, I, I have many dreams in robotics, and one of them was to build a robot that could autonomously go and get me a cup of coffee. And that's a pretty hard problem if you think about uh, you know, how do you, how do I get from here, through the doors, through the elevator, uh, somehow communicate with the person serving coffee, take the coffee, bring it back down. On one end of the spectrum of robotic capabilities, we have pure human control, teleoperation, and that continues today um, in space, underwater, and many other contexts. On the other end, uh, you have fully autonomous robots, and the example I gave of the coffee uh, fetching robot is pretty sophisticated example of, of full autonomy, uh, yet that is the laboratory demonstration. That robot's not going to be serving coffee for, for many years. So what I see happening in robotics is the spectrum going from tele, pure teleoperation to purely autonomous. And as we've seen in cars, you start adding smaller capabilities such as controlling the speed of a car with a speed control or adaptive speed control where it controls the distance between you and another car. So we're, as we see in automobiles, more and more low-level capabilities are being added to augment the human's ability to drive the car in this case. In, in robotics, you know, we're using laser scanners to avoid obstacles so the person controlling the robot doesn't have to think about all the details of how it's m moving along. And I think this is how we're going to learn to build autonomous robots kind of understanding what um, and prioritizing the low-level capabilities uh, and building up a, an ensemble of capabilities that can then become um, expected behaviors that can be commanded from from a higher level to get to the point of you know go wash the dishes is going gonna, is gonna to take many layers of these low-level capabilities I think that's the interesting trajectory for robotics research is learning how to build it in those autonomous capabilities that are really of value to the next higher level of autonomy. There's probably always going to be a case where the human is in the loop. Um, uh, it might be just simply deciding, you know, the robot on Mars needs to go uh, inspect a rock, but the human has to decide which rock to inspect. The robot doesn't have the judgment to, to say that's an interesting rock, at least not yet. We're starting to see robots that um, are there for fun or even for comfort. You know, maybe, maybe that's a relevant application. Um, you know, TVs are entertaining. They're, they're not just for, you know, security. Um, and so people can engage with these evolving technologies in all sorts of ways, whether it's practical everyday task performance or entertainment. We're fascinated with robots. Um, we're fascinated with the idea of making something as capable as we are, or maybe more capable, and I think that's eventually what we're going to see. But there, I think there's a long road. You know, a robot that's going to be more capable than us, I'd say 40 years maybe. Um, check with me in 40 years on that one.